Hey folks, Nathan here from the Star Wars Timeline Gold, Star Wars Beyond the Films, and Cloud City Casino, which of course is a Star Wars gaming podcast over at StarWarsReport.com, bringing you a look at Promise of Power, the next of the Force Packs for the Star Wars LCG. Now you'll notice I'm saying this a little slower than I normally do, because I want to take a little bit more time with this one, albeit not a ton, because this is it. This is the last Force Pack that will ever be released. For Star Wars The Card Game, the LCG from Fantasy Flight that had this great sort of consumer-friendly business model of these force packs where you always knew what you were getting as you were expanding your game. No blind packs here at all. No customizable card game or trading card game kind of model of blind boosters bought over and over again to get what you need. This was an LCG, a living card game, which is a model popularized by Fantasy Flight. But the game is ending, whether it is a victim of the success of Destiny, which of course is a Star Wars game that is cards and dice that does use a CCG model and is therefore probably much more profitable in the process of also being much more frustrating from a consumer standpoint for those who don't like blind booster packs. Uh, it's, it's kind of up in the air. But suffice to say, the game seemed like it had been losing steam recently, and now it is over. You'll notice here... When you look at the rules supplement, that really what this cycle introduced for the Alliances cycle were new affiliation cards, which were back in the first of the six Force Packs. And then the keyword influence. The rest was from earlier. And keyword influence, excuse me, keyword influence basically said, look, if you got a card that is generating resources, like say, double crossing droid up here and those resources were on a card that said influence, then they could count as all factions. What you find, though, a lot of times within some of these force packs is that there's nothing actually in the force pack, or very little, that actually uses any of the new mechanics from that cycle. In this force pack, there isn't a single one of these that uses the keyword influence, and it doesn't have any new affiliation cards because that was five packs ago. It really does seem like in the process of losing steam, some of the sort of themes brought in with the new game mechanics for each cycle became somewhat less and less common within their own cycle. Maybe that's part of what was going on. Maybe there was just sort of a sense of, you know what, been there, done that. There's not a whole lot more we can do. Suffice to say, though, this is the last of the packs. You'll see it looking like this on the stands, Promise of Power. There's our little piece from the back that tells us what's in it. These are Force Packs 285 through 289, or excuse me, Force Packs. Objective sets. See, I'm getting all twisted around because it's over. We have our objective sets, 285 to 289. None of them limited to one per objective deck, so we do have a duplicate of each set. And we have one for the Jedi, one for Smugglers and Spies, one for the Sith, one for the Imperial Navy, one for Scum and Villainy. We do not have one for the Rebel Alliance in this case, nor do we have any neutral ones that are neutral uh, within the light or the dark side. So let's take a look, starting with 285. We have Twilight of the Apprentice, and if that sounds familiar, of course, that's the title of an episode of Rebels, or a two-parter of Rebels. And as you see as we go through here, this is a very Rebels-heavy thematic force pack. So we have Twilight of the Apprentice with Ezra Bridger. Finally, a decent version of Ezra that kind of looks like him that doesn't have the enormous giant schnoz on him. He actually looks like he might look uh, in a realistic, more lifelike portrayal than what we saw in Rebels. Good call. Then we have uh, Maul there as Old Master. Right? Call me Old Master. I mean Master. We have Ezra's lightsaber, clashing, of course, with an Inquisitor one. Use your power. Another Ezra. And Echoes of the Force. For Smugglers and Spies, we have the Broken Horn with Sicatro Visago, an IGRM bodyguard droid, and then another IGRM, Payback, and Allies of Necessity. That then brings us to the Sith as we move to the Dark Side player. We have Order of Inquisitors, you know, like the Inquisitorious. We have the Seventh Sister, the Fifth Brother, and the Eighth Brother. Uh, who all, of course, participated in Twilight of the Apprentice. We then have Double-Bladed Lightsaber, with, yes, that whole image of them using it like a freaking helicopter blade. 
and press for answers. Then we have Imperial Navy with support the fleet, or excuse me, support of the fleet. The Relentless, also from Rebels. TIE Escort, another TIE Escort. Imperial Influence and Allies of Necessity, the dark side version this time. And then finally for Scum and Villainy, Double Crossing Droid, AT-88. Twi'lek Sycophant, Secret Information, Chain Reaction, and Allies of Necessity. So really, aside from the one there for Scum and Villainy, all very much themed after Rebels this time, but none using the new mechanics introduced for the Alliance's cycle. Kind of an inauspicious end, except of course for the Ezra art, which actually really kind of works this time. Kind of an inauspicious end. It's definitely going out with a whimper instead of a bang, but I, for one, will fondly recall the Star Wars LCG in the future and continue playing. I'm not really big on the whole model of Destiny, but we've talked about that in other videos. Hopefully at some point, Star Wars will see new life again as a pure card game. But for now, it's over from Fantasy Flight Games.